The Miracle Doctor Won't Be a Kept Man, My Heart Belongs Ashore, Chapter 1111. The highest realm of cultivation is of course to form a golden core and attain immortality. You should be well aware of this, Lady Meiji said with encouraging amusement. Does having a golden core now mean I'm on the path to immortality? Kieran asked curiously. Lady Meiji couldn't help but laugh. Pfft. Kieran blushed slightly and asked, What's the situation? Tell me quickly. You have a golden core, but it's just in its embryonic stage and was formed in an unconventional way. What do you mean by unconventional? Kieran asked hurriedly. Normally one cultivates through nine levels of body tempering to enter the earth realm, progressing through the early, middle, and late stages before forming a golden core, and then moving on to the heaven realm. But you, with only the power of the third level of body tempering, already have a golden core, Lady Meiji explained with a complex tone. What should I do? Is it dangerous? Could it be like forcing growth and causing harm? Having some knowledge of cultivation, Kirin was concerned. I'm not entirely sure. That's why I entered your body, to help you understand and control it in time, Lady Meiji said. Kirin felt a headache coming on. Anyway, having a golden core in your body is a good thing. Many people never have this opportunity. At worst, even if you die, it's worth it, Lady Meiji encouraged. Kirin brightened up, smiling. True. You need to focus on cultivation now. Only by becoming stronger can you quickly advance, Lady Meiji advised. Kirin groaned at the thought of cultivation. How do I cultivate? The earth doesn't have many spiritual pills or energies now. It might have been true before, but things are different now, Lady Meiji said confidently. Kirin was puzzled. Why is it different now? The evil power of dragon saliva has begun to spread here. It will inevitably merge with the western evil forces, becoming immense and powerful, Lady Meiji said thoughtfully. Isn't that terrifying? On the surface, yes, but you must understand the principle of yin and yang. Just as my endless hatred brought forth Aoki Kosner's love, Lady Meiji explained. Kieran took a deep breath, his face full of contemplation. You have the power of the dragon vein, which is a force of justice. The stronger the evil forces become, the stronger the force of justice within you will grow, Lady Meiji continued. If both sides become strong, won't it cause great social conflicts and upheavals? Kieran asked. I don't know, but I imagine the world may evolve into one where warriors and cultivators emerge continually, Lady Meiji said. Enlightening Kiran. Kieran's expression changed again, but he soon thought of how he was already helping Snow Xander cultivate, which was altering her path. So, it could turn into an era of martial prowess? Perhaps. Without martial strength, one cannot protect themselves and might face death. In such a situation, everyone will strive to live, Lady Meiji said thoughtfully. I understand, Kieran said solemnly. You're under increasing pressure now. You must quickly find a way to cultivate and become stronger, Lady Meiji advised. Do you know of any quick methods for cultivation? The best ways are through various elixirs and cultivation manuals. Only with these can you accelerate your progress. The faster you advance, the more people you can protect, Lady Meiji said. Kieran felt the heavy pressure. There are no longer many spiritual energies on Earth. Where can I find so many spiritual elixirs? I'm not sure, but you must find a way quickly. Especially now in the Western world, you need to seize some valuable things before they become stronger. Otherwise, you might become their foundation for cultivation, Lady Meiji said. Kieran felt the pressure increase instantly. I don't know how things will develop, but I know the evil power of dragon saliva will become a formidable force. Your golden core must grow quickly, Lady Meiji said. I understand. I will strive to cultivate quickly, Kieran said with determination. I hope you can improve quickly. When your golden core matures, I might be able to regain my human form and stay with you forever, Lady Meiji said sincerely, stirring complex feelings in Kieran. After my duel with the top five Western fighters, I'll start seeking treasures, Kieran said. Don't tell anyone about my existence. I'll reveal what I know when necessary, Lady Meiji said before her voice faded away. Kieran's face returned to calm, but he felt immense pressure. He knew he would face more dangers and responsibilities. The golden core in his body was a potential crisis. However, he also felt a surge of heroism and confidence for the future. He began mobilizing his internal power, cultivating around the golden core. Without a clear method, he still tried to strengthen the golden core. After about two hours, his phone rang and Kieran opened his eyes. It was Ailes calling. Kieran answered and Ailes spoke respectfully. Young Master York! The fifth ranked of the top five Western fighters, Dessler, is challenging you in three days. Kieran's eyebrows twitched. Who is Dessler? He is from the Western world's top five fighters, ranked fifth. 
His family has long been a leading martial family in the West, with special cultivation methods to strengthen their members, Ailes explained. Hearing about cultivation methods, Kieran's eyes lit up. This was precisely what he needed. Where is the Dessler family located? They are in Hughes, Manchester. Their family manages that place and no one is allowed to enter without their permission, Ailes said. I understand. I'll be there in three days, Kieran said. Good, young Master York. Stay safe, Ailes said before hanging up. Kieran's eyes were filled with intense battle spirit and curiosity about the Dessler family's cultivation methods. Thinking of Hughes, he decided to go and investigate, hoping to find a cultivation method to quickly improve his golden core. With this in mind, Kieran eagerly left the Hilton Hotel and headed towards Hughes. Chapter 1112 When Kieran York arrived in Hughes, he found the street brightly lit. However, the street was eerily quiet, as if it belonged to another world. On his way there, he had passed through bustling areas where people gathered in groups, drunks wandered with bottles in hand, shouting and cursing. But the street in Hughes was orderly and silent, devoid of any people, like a forbidden zone. Kieran recalled Ailes's warning and became even more convinced of the Dessler family's unusual nature. Taking a deep breath, he moved swiftly, disappearing into the night like a fleeting shadow. His speed was so great that he seemed like a meteor streaking through the street, unnoticed by anyone. When he reached the grand villa at the center of Hughes, he sensed a powerful aura emanating from the courtyard, like waves from the ocean. Kieran understood why the street was so quiet. Any ordinary person would be terrified and flee upon feeling such an aura. Kieran took a deep breath and approached quickly. After a few steps, he saw two men coming from a distance, their eyes sharp and filled with intensity. Most notably, these men exuded a domineering presence, like unsheathed swords. Sensing their formidable aura, Kieran's expression grew serious. These men were as strong as those who had absorbed the power of the dragon saliva. A thought crossed his mind. If these people absorbed the dragon saliva, they would become even stronger. Not wanting to alert anyone, Kieran quickly hid, avoiding detection. After the men passed, he continued towards the villa. It was a three-story mansion, brightly lit, with loud, boisterous laughter of men and women coming from inside. The raucous, lewd behavior shocked Kieran. He took a few more steps and saw two more powerful men emerging from the villa. Kieran hid again. This pattern continued until Kieran evaded five waves of people and finally approached the villa. Just as he was about to enter, he felt a gust of wind coming from the east. Kieran's heart tightened, and he quickly dodged, bending low to avoid the attack. The wind dissipated after he dodged, showing that the attacker had precise control. Kieran was shocked but saw that the attacker had not struck again. With a moment's hesitation, realizing he had been discovered, Kieran chased towards the east. The person hadn't left but seemed to be waiting for Kieran. As Kieran neared, the figure moved away like a gray shadow, agile and quick like a monkey. Kieran hesitated whether to pursue but the figure stopped again, seemingly waiting. Knowing it was a deliberate lure, Kieran decided to follow. Following the gray shadow, Kieran left Hughes and arrived in a suburban area. The figure stopped, facing away from Kieran, exuding a powerful aura. Kieran stopped and saw it was an elderly man with graying hair. Though not tall, the man's presence was immensely strong. Kieran sensed the old man's deep, unfathomable strength and couldn't gauge his power. Do you have business with the Dessler family? the old man asked in a low voice. Though Kieran felt uncomfortable with the old man's tone, he sensed no malice. Calming himself, he asked, Who are you, and why are you here? You don't need to know who I am. I just want to tell you that with your current strength, you can't defeat Dessler, the old man said firmly, with a hint of concern. Kieran was surprised the old man knew about his duel with Dessler. He stayed silent, watching the old man. You're just a martial artist, but he's a cultivator. You're no match for him, the old man continued. Kieran's eyes narrowed. You're from Dragon's Land. Whether I'm from Dragon's Land or not is irrelevant. What matters is that you're only at the third level of body tempering, while Dessler has been practicing cultivation techniques since childhood and is now at the fifth level. You can't beat him, the old man said with apparent concern. Kieran was shocked to learn Dessler was a cultivator. Why is Dessler a cultivator? Because his family has cultivation techniques. He's been a cultivator since childhood, the old man explained. Can you guide me on how to counter his techniques? Kieran asked humbly, remembering Lady Meiji's advice. I can't guide you, but I can tell you the name of his cultivation technique, the old man said. That would be great. Thank you, sir. The Dessler family practices the Dragon and Phoenix Core technique. Dragon and Phoenix Core technique? 
Kieran was surprised and quickly asked for more details. Did you hear the sounds of men and women from the villa? Those sounds should be familiar, the old man said. Kieran nodded. He had indeed heard the wild sounds of men and women together. Kieran frowned slightly, looking at the old man. Isn't that an evil cultivation method? The old man shook his head. It's not an evil cultivation method. Kieran was stunned, watching the old man. The old man, hands behind his back, gazed at the sky. The Dragon and Phoenix core technique is originally a secret cultivation method from Dragonsland. But years ago, the Dessler family stole it. They turned a good cultivation method into what it is now. Kieran took a deep breath, his eyes sharp. The Dragon and Phoenix core technique is from Dragonsland? The old man nodded slightly but didn't speak. His aura seemed to tremble with anger. Sensing the old man's agitation, Kieran asked, Are you determined to retrieve the Dragon and Phoenix core technique? The old man's body trembled slightly, but he laughed heartily without turning around. Kieran was taken aback. It seems that Axel Yanes chose the right successor. The old man's words left Kieran stunned again. Chapter 1113 Senior, do you know sect leader Axel Yanes? Kieran York asked, his gaze fixed on the back of the gray-clad elder. Axel Yanes is a pride of Dragonsland. Even though he has passed away, his legacy lives on, the elder said, looking up at the starry night sky. As people of Dragonsland, we must shoulder the mission and responsibility of protecting our country. Kirin felt the elder's fervor and was moved, his eyes filled with excitement as he continued to look at the elder's back. I guess your visit to the Dessler family in Hughes is related to the Dragon and Phoenix core technique, right? The elder asked, shifting the topic. I came to duel with Dessler and wanted to gauge his family's situation. As for the Dragon and Phoenix core technique, I wouldn't have known about it if you hadn't mentioned it, Kirin replied honestly. The elder nodded slightly. Very few people know about the Dragon and Phoenix core technique anymore. If I hadn't sensed the aura of the Joyful Odyssey on you, I might not have brought you out to tell you. Kirin was once again shocked. He didn't expect the Elder to recognize the aura of the Joyful Odyssey on him so easily. Please teach me more, Kirin said humbly, looking at the Elder. If you manage to obtain the Dragon and Phoenix core technique and combine it with the Joyful Odyssey, your growth and progress will be much faster, the Elder continued, still facing away from Kiran. Hearing this, Kiran became excited and subconsciously clenched his fists. Senior, can you tell me where the Dessler family hides the Dragon and Phoenix core technique? The Elder shook his head. I have searched for a long time but have not found it. I cannot tell you its location. Although Kiran couldn't see the Elder's expression, he believed his words. I lured you out because I was worried you would alert the Dessler family and make them more vigilant. Besides, you are currently no match for Dessler, the Elder said. Hearing the Elder say for the second time that he was not a match for Dessler made Kieran's expression serious and somewhat unwilling. You should go back and figure out how to improve quickly. As for obtaining the Dragon and Phoenix core technique, if you survive the duel with Dessler, you might have a chance, the Elder advised. Kieran's expression became heavy. He didn't expect the Elder to think he had no chance of winning against Dessler. This ignited his pride, making him eager to test himself against the Dessler family. You have the power of the Dragon Vein within you. If you can harness it, it can enhance your abilities, but you need a catalyst, the Elder said again. What kind of catalyst? Kieran, knowledgeable in traditional medicine, understood the importance of a catalyst and asked quickly. Southeast of Man City is a place called Mysterious Moon Pond. The water there is icy cold, and people who fall in freeze instantly. If you can harmonize your body's yin and yang there, it might strengthen your resistance, allowing you to advance in your body-tempering cultivation, the elder suggested. Kieran's eyes lit up with excitement on hearing this. Currently in the body-tempering stage, he was working on strengthening his body and enhancing his abilities. The pain he felt from absorbing the evil dragon vein energy earlier was intense. If he could try the mysterious moon pond, it might change how he handled the dragon saliva's evil power. Thank you, senior. I will go now, Kieran said fearlessly. I'm not sure if there are any dangers there, so be cautious, the elder warned, showing concern. Kieran was grateful for the elder's care. Don't worry, senior. How can I face stronger opponents if I can't overcome this? The elder seemed pleased with Kieran's words and laughed. Seeing young people like you, I am hopeful. I believe the future of Dragon's Land will be brighter. Kieran felt a surge of pride upon hearing this. Go quickly and try to gain something, the elder said before turning and disappearing. Watching the direction where the elder vanished, Kieran felt a mixture of gravity and self-encouragement. He told himself he must become stronger. If it weren't for Lady Meiji's reminder and the elder's guidance, 
The duel with the Dessler family could have been a major crisis, possibly leading to a crushing defeat. Kieran quickly made his way to Mysterious Moon Pond. When he arrived, it was already the early hours of the morning, and everything was pitch dark. He felt the cold mist in the air. Even though it was summer, the mist was as cold as winter ice water. The dragon vein energy within Kieran naturally flowed out to resist the cold. As he moved closer, the water in Mysterious Moon Pond seemed to ripple, and he could hear the sound of water flowing. Kieran didn't stop and continued towards the pond. When he reached the edge, he saw the water was pitch black, unfathomably deep, and exuded an endless coldness. This coldness felt different from the dragon salivas. It was as if an object emitting coldness was trying to envelop him, whereas the dragon saliva's coldness penetrated deep into the bones. Kieran bent down, scooped some water with his hand, and felt as if he was holding ice. The cold pierced to the bone. The dragon vein energy in his body quickly neutralized the cold, making his body feel more comfortable. Feeling the change, Kieran was excited. Seeing no unusual situations around, he leaped into the center of mysterious moon pond. His body skimmed the water's surface, and when he reached the middle, he took a deep breath and plunged in. As Kieran submerged, he felt the coldness like countless sharp blades assaulting his body, and the pond felt like a beast trying to devour him. When he tried to use his dragon vein energy to resist, he suddenly saw a massive, blood-red mouth opening towards him. Chapter 1114 Kieran York sensed danger but thought it was just an illusion and didn't pay much attention to it. He continued to dive deeper. However, as he descended, he felt the enormous blood-red mouth getting closer, accompanied by an icy breath coming from the water. Kieran suddenly realized that something was wrong. This was not an illusion, it was real. He took a deep breath and swung his fist, sending a burst of power toward the blood-red mouth. With a thud, the eerie sound echoed in the water, and the blood-red mouth instantly disappeared. The water around him bubbled violently as if it were boiling. Kieran wasn't sure if what he had just experienced was real or an illusion, but he firmly continued his descent. Suddenly, he felt an intense coldness from beneath his feet, similar to the sensation of the blood-red mouth. Realizing the danger, Kieran quickly moved upward, feeling the cold brush against the soles of his feet as he ascended. A sense of unease grew within him, as if he were encountering a monstrous creature. At that moment, he felt something cold pressing against his waist, like an icy sword. Kieran concentrated the power of the dragon vein in his waist. With a burst, the coldness vanished, and he regained his freedom of movement. Kieran felt the situation becoming increasingly complicated. He didn't dare to be careless and quickened his descent, eager to discover what lay below, hoping the coldness would temper his body. He finally reached the deeper waters of Mysterious Moon Pond. It was pitch dark, and the water felt dense. He could barely make out a black shadow circling him, its mouth emitting a relentless coldness. Kieran was now certain that a monstrous creature resided in the pond. To avoid disturbing it, he tried to release his dragon vein power to intimidate the beast. As soon as his power emanated, the beast reacted violently, attacking him madly. The creature became more visible, a giant shark-like body with a beaver-like head and whiskers. Kieran had never seen such a beast before. He swung his fists to fend off the attacks, but the creature's fins were like sharp swords, slicing through the water, creating a visible split. Kieran quickly retracted his fist, fearing that his arm would be severed if it made contact. Before he could compose himself, the beast rolled and charged at him. Kieran noticed that the creature had four legs resembling those of a sheep, complete with hooves. His mind buzzed as he recalled an ancient text describing a mythical beast called the four-symbol powder yang beast. This creature was said to live in icy waters and was known for its ferocity. According to the ancient text, it had disappeared long ago. Yet here it was, in mysterious moon pond. Curiosity and caution filled Kieran. The beast's repeated failed attempts to harm him seemed to anger it, causing it to swim rapidly and attack with its mouth, fins, and body. The beast's frenzy made the pond feel like it was boiling. Despite his fear, Kieran remained calm, looking for an opportunity to counterattack. The beast exposed its soft white underbelly during one failed attack with its fin. Remembering from legends that this was its weak spot, Kieran instinctively struck with his right hand, aiming for the belly. Sensing the threat, the beast retaliated with its hind hooves. Kieran pulled back his hand but transformed the power of the dragon vein into a blade-like energy and continued his assault. A ripping sound echoed through the water. The beast howled in pain, and a white pearl emerged from its body. Kieran instinctively grabbed the pearl, which immediately merged into his body, making him feel like he was freezing solid. He tried to use the dragon vein power to resist, 
but it seemed to vanish. Losing consciousness, he sank to the bottom of the pond. In his final moments of consciousness, Kiran also saw the beast's body sinking. The pond's surface began to freeze, ice forming like a mountainous wave pressing down on him. Despair filled Kiran's heart. He closed his eyes, feeling powerless to resist his fate. As he sank to the pond's bottom, he fell into the beast's wounded belly. Kirin lost consciousness. He didn't know that mysterious moon pond had completely frozen over, resembling a winter ice field. His body inside the beast alternated between intense heat and cold, trembling constantly. His skin turned red and white as if undergoing a fusion or battle. Unconscious, Kirin's body reacted instinctively. He didn't know how long he had been unconscious, but when he opened his eyes, he felt a surge of strength. The beast's body had disappeared, but he was surrounded by icy cold. Kieran's head throbbed as he wondered how to escape. Chapter 1115 Kieran York tested his body and felt a surge of tremendous power, much stronger than the pure dragon vein power he had before. This surprised him, and he attempted to release this power to dispel the ice. However, as soon as the power emerged, it seemed to be instantly locked by the ice, which remained unmoved. Kieran grew slightly anxious. If he couldn't break through the ice, how would he escape? More importantly, he didn't know how much time had passed, had the day of his duel with Dessler already arrived. Just as Kieran began to worry, feeling helpless, Lady Meiji's voice suddenly echoed in his ear. I truly admire your luck. It seems that fortune favors you greatly. Lady Melji, please come out. What should I do now? Kieran asked urgently, feeling a glimmer of hope and reliance upon hearing her voice. Why are you so flustered? Are you worried about the women outside? Lady Meiji's tone was teasing, showing no urgency. She continued, It shouldn't be, though. You never worried about them when we were together on St. Tess Mountain. Kieran felt a bit helpless. Lady Meiji's words implied that having her by his side back then allowed him to forget about other women. The truth was, he was anxious to face Dessler and worried about Yvonne Quinn. Am I beautiful? Lady Meiji's shadow suddenly appeared before Kieran, dressed in the same flowing white robes, looking like a celestial being descending from the heavens. However, Kieran, lying in the frozen depths of mysterious moon pond, couldn't move and could only gaze at Lady Meiji. What's wrong? Don't you feel anything? Lady Meiji asked teasingly. I'm just anxious to get out of here, Kieran replied honestly. Lady Meiji said, you can get out of here with me, can't you? Kieran was taken aback and looked at her questioningly. Lady Meiji nodded firmly. Didn't the gray-clad elder tell you that you must harmonize yin and yang to temper your body? Did you forget? Kieran suddenly remembered and quickly asked, Harmonize yin and yang? How do I do that? Lady Meiji burst into a charming laugh. You must be out of your mind. You don't even know how to handle this. Kieran's mind buzzed. I don't want to be with you, old witch. Old witch? Lady Meiji repeated, smiling without anger. Instead, her ethereal body seemed to press down on Kieran. Kieran's face changed dramatically, filled with tension and fear. Lady Meiji's icy white hand gently stroked his face. Kieran felt as if his face were being scraped by an ice blade, cold and sharp, making him shiver all over. Why is your hand so cold? Kieran asked. My hand has always been this cold. You just never noticed because you never touched it before, Lady Meiji replied with a tone full of resentment. She then leaned in to kiss Kieran. Kieran tried to evade, but Lady Meiji commanded, If you want to get out, don't resist or you'll never escape. Kieran felt helpless. Although he didn't understand what Lady Meiji intended, he knew she wasn't simple and might have a solution. He stopped resisting. As soon as Lady Meiji's lips touched his, Kieran felt an icy sensation spreading through his mouth, making him unusually alert. When he tried to control his body, Lady Meiji's hand stopped him. Kieran then felt something moving inside him. Holding his breath and concentrating, he discovered the white pearl he had obtained from the four-symbol powder Yang Beast. He was stunned. The pearl was incredibly cold, almost bone-chilling. What shocked him more was that his dragon vein power seemed unfazed by this coldness, not resisting at all. The coldness traveled through his body, merging with the cold from Lady Meiji. Kieran's body alternated between hot and cold, his cells expanding and contracting with each cycle. His muscles felt like they were being hammered, his skin stretched taut. Lady Meiji's body became more tangible and human, like... Kieran didn't know what the White Pearl did, but he felt both anticipation and excitement. The coldness finally circulated throughout Kieran's body. When he felt his body becoming numb and uncontrollable, the ice around him began to crack. Kieran was startled. The ice exploded with a crisp sound, and his body shot upwards. 
As he ascended, the surrounding ice melted into water, and his dragon vein power surged like a rising sun. Kirin was both shocked and amazed by the transformation. The principle of yin generating yang and extreme hatred turning into love applies here. Though it consumes much of your power, this cold pearl in your body will eventually temper your dragon vein power, making it stronger, Lady Meiji explained. Kirin felt enlightened. Looking at Lady Meiji, he saw she was vibrant, almost glowing, like a perfect woman before him. His heart trembled with an inexplicable urge. Lady Meiji flicked her hair and gave Kirin a seductive glance. I need to go back and absorb this cold pearl. It will benefit you in the future. Before Kirin could respond, Lady Meiji disappeared. Kirin noticed that the golden core within him now had a layer of white. Excited, he quickly suppressed his feelings and headed back to the Hilton Hotel. Chapter 1116 When Kieran York returned to the Hilton Hotel, he realized that three days had passed. His head felt like it had grown several sizes. Today was the day of his duel with Dessler. His heart was filled with anxiety. He didn't know the location of the duel nor what had transpired in the past three days. He hurriedly rushed back to his room. Entering the room, Kieran saw Katie pacing back and forth, her eyes filled with anxiety and worry. Her deep blue eyes were brimming with urgency and agitation. Kieran's sudden entry brought a look of delight to Katie's face. She quickly approached him, grabbing his arm and eagerly asking, Where have you been? You disappeared for three days. Ignoring Katie's question, Kieran scanned the room for Yvonne, but she was nowhere to be found. His face paled as he urgently asked, Where is Yvonne Quinn? Her face showing even more worry, Katie replied, Today is the day of your duel with Dessler. We couldn't find you, so Yvonne disguised herself as you and went to face Dessler. Boom. Kieran felt as if he had been struck by lightning, his head buzzing. His heart was filled with concern for Yvonne. He grabbed Katie's hand and urgently said, Take me there, quickly. Katie, unsure why Kieran was so frantic, nodded and replied, I was waiting for you here. Thank you, Kieran said sincerely, looking at Katie. Hearing Kieran's thanks, Katie felt a small thrill of excitement. She had always felt that Kieran looked down on her often mocking and humiliating her. Likewise, she had looked down on Kieran, finding him lacking in gentlemanly manners. It was as if they were constantly at odds, each despising the other. Now wasn't the time to discuss these things. Katie continued, The duel with Dessler is at Man City Square. I've heard that many people have gathered, and some are even live-streaming it. Kieran's face grew even more serious. Has it started? In twenty minutes, Katie said, but before she could finish, she screamed as Kieran lifted her and began running, holding her like she was flying through the air. Katie instinctively wrapped her arms around Kieran's neck, her eyes filled with tension, excitement, and anticipation. She felt like a little girl in the embrace of her beloved man. Kieran, however, was filled with urgency and determination. He might not even be a match for Dessler, let alone Yvonne. If she faced Dessler, she would surely die. At Man City Square, the crowd was massive. On the temporary stage, Dessler stood still, his legs slightly apart, arms hanging naturally, eyes closed, resembling a statue. A faint aura surrounded him, making him seem unapproachable. Below the stage, countless women waved glow sticks, shouting wildly, undeterred by the duel above. Disguised as Kieran, Yvonne Quinn sat in a temporary seating area prepared by the Nicholas family. She had made herself look like Kieran, but appeared thinner and more fragile. Nicholas had scrutinized Yvonne several times, recognizing the disguise but saying nothing. He called Katie to ask about Kieran's whereabouts, but Katie said she didn't know so he stopped inquiring. Nicholas had his own plans, hoping to make Kieran hate the Western Five Masters, leading to conflicts from which the Nicholas family could benefit. He didn't care if Yvonne was real or fake, alive or dead. The crowd erupted when the clock on Man City Square struck 8.30 p.m., Dessler will win, shouted the women in the front row, waving their glow sticks like crazed fans. Numerous live streamers began shouting into their phones. Kieran easily killed Kanpei Ichiro at Sunland's Pagoda Square, proving himself a true master. Today at Man City Square, our Dessler will duel Kieran to see who is truly stronger. The West has always been stronger than the East as killing Kieran will be like killing a monkey. Kill the yellow monkey from the East, someone in the crowd shouted, and the chant echoed through the square. Yvonne clenched her fists in anger but remembered Kieran's reminder and Dessler's formidable presence. She realized Dessler was very powerful and mysterious, so she didn't dare to act rashly. Are you scared? People around her shouted, raising their middle fingers to provoke her into action. 
Yvonne took a deep breath, suppressing her anger and sat back down. The yellow monkey is scared, the crowd chanted, their taunts spreading through the live streams to the far corners of the world. Supporters of Kieran were filled with anger, tension, and hope. Dessler, who had been as steady as a mountain, slowly opened his eyes and looked into the distance. The people of Dragon's Land do not know fear. Kieran's calm and powerful voice resonated from afar. Chapter 1117 Young Master York? Nicholas finally pretended to realize that Yvonne Quinn was a fake, staring at her with a questioning look in his eyes. Yvonne, excited, removed the human skin mask from her face, revealing her true appearance. Yvonne was stunningly beautiful, her charm and elegance unparalleled. However, in the eyes of those present, it only became a bigger mockery. Kieran York is so scared he sent a woman to fight for him. What a coward. Dragon's Land people aren't afraid? What nonsense. They're lying and deceiving us. Dragon's Land people are cowards, naturally. The crowd began to ridicule Yvonne and the approaching Kieran York with endless insults. Coward. You finally showed up. Dessler's voice boomed like a tidal wave causing many to feel an inexplicable pressure, though it didn't frighten them. Instead, it made them more excited. Kill the yellow monkey. Dessler will win. Kieran York is a coward. The fervent shouts rose and fell. Women in the front row holding glow sticks started dancing. Some bold and uninhibited women even stripped off their long dresses, revealing their exquisite bikinis. They were hot. Their dancing and their shouts were hot, making the atmosphere like a raging fire. Dessler's heart burned like a fire, his eyes bright as he watched the distance. Kieran got closer, finally reaching the edge of the square. He gently set Katie down and walked toward the square. The crowd, seeing Kieran's approach, felt a slight shock from his imposing presence. But soon they all revealed disdain, coward. The shouting intensified like boiling water at a hundred degrees. Kieran seemed oblivious to the noise as he walked forward. Kieran! Yvonne ran over, her eyes filled with joy and emotion. She opened her arms and threw herself into Kieran's embrace. Kieran gently hugged her and patted her shoulder, saying, I'm here. You don't need to be afraid. Yvonne nodded, her eyes full of excitement and relief, as if she had found her strongest support. Kieran looked up at Dessler on the stage, nearly two meters tall, with white skin, yellow hair, and deep blue eyes that shone brightly. Standing there, though not exuding an aura, Dessler still emitted a powerful pressure. The pressure of a level five tempered body was immense forcing Kieran to release his internal energy to resist it and face Dessler directly. His heart was slightly shocked, knowing his opponent was very strong, even uncertain if he could handle it. However, this also stirred his pride, filling his eyes with determination. Wait for me down here. Kieran didn't want Yvonne to worry, speaking softly before letting her go. He walked slowly toward the stage. Dessler's eyes never left Kieran, and he smiled, saying, Kieran, every step you take is a step toward death. The one who should die is you, Katie shouted at Dessler. Kieran hadn't expected Katie to speak up for him, but he didn't turn around, continuing forward. Dessler laughed, looking at Kieran, saying, I don't know what you did to make these fools believe you can win. Dessler addressed the crowd. Martial arts are ranked by levels. Kieran is only at level three tempered body while I'm at level five. At level five, I can prevent my tendons, bones, and skin from being harmed. So how can Kieran kill me? Martial arts, tempered body. These new terms echoed through the crowd, causing ripples of curiosity and confusion. Yvonne's face turned pale, watching Kieran's back, unable to help shouting, Kieran! Kieran kept walking, not stopping. Kieran, others may not understand martial arts or the tempered body, but shouldn't you explain it to them? Dessler's tone was arrogant, filled with disdain. Kieran's eyes narrowed, focusing on Dessler. Dessler wasn't wrong. Level 3 tempered body could only generate internal force. It, it meant combining internal and external forces to create a powerful attack. However, a level 5 tempered body allowed internal force to act as protection, making the body nearly impervious to harm. Though not literally invulnerable, it could be described as having iron-like toughness. This meant a level 3's attack on a level 5 was like hitting a rock with a knife. What damage could it do? Dessler's arrogance had a basis, and his confidence was justified. Yet, Kieran showed no fear. He knew he had no choice and felt no terror or hesitation, only unwavering determination. Looking at Dessler calmly, Kieran said, The gap between us isn't something you can decide with words. Let's see the final result. Dessler laughed disdainfully, his eyes full of contempt. 
The enthusiastic women in the audience made disrespectful gestures at Kiran, adding to the tension. At that moment, Kiran appeared to the crowd as a weakling, easily killed by Dessler. Dessler closed his eyes, no longer watching Kiran as if he had already declared Kiran dead and didn't care. The scene fell into a quiet, tense atmosphere. Kiran walked resolutely toward Dessler. Everyone who cared about Kiran clenched their fists, eyes wide, silently praying for him. Chapter 1118. One person, full of pride. One person, full of courage. Though Kieran York was among thousands of Westerners in Man City, he walked confidently and easily. At this moment, many were reminded of his towering figure in the pagoda of Nation Square, knowing he was facing death but still pressing forward without hesitation. This is what it means to be a man with an unyielding backbone and unwavering loyalty to his country. As a Dragon's Land citizen, one must fight for the nation's dignity, and Kieran embodied this to the fullest. Even Yvonne Quinn standing behind him was in tears, her eyes filled with excitement and inexplicable emotion. This man was worth standing by through life and death, never to be parted. Kieran reached the stage facing Dessler. Dessler's eyes opened slightly, glancing at Kieran. His blue eyes seemed to shoot out two sharp swords, but quickly regained calm. He said, I didn't expect you to have such courage. There are many unexpected things in this world, which is why miracles are created, Kieran replied, sensing Dessler's powerful aura. Dessler's aura was overwhelming, making Kieran feel like a small boat in a vast ocean. Dessler said nothing, standing straight. His nearly two-meter-tall body stood like a towering pine, instantly changing the entire atmosphere. Kieran felt immense pressure, like a tidal wave crashing over him. Kieran's face felt like it was being pricked by countless needles, painful and stinging from the cold wind of a winter day. He was shocked by the power of a level-five tempered body, just the aura was enough to launch a sharp attack. At this moment, Kieran knew that even as a level three tempered body, he needed to circulate his internal energy to resist the powerful aura. Anyone else might have been blown away or killed on the spot. Taking a deep breath, Kieran steadied his internal energy to counter Dessler's strong aura. His slight movement made Dessler smirk. Why struggle when it's futile? Whether it's futile or not, no one knows. Let's get started. We can't keep these people waiting. Kieran's tone was full of battle intent, giving the impression of someone willingly facing danger. If you're in such a hurry to die, I'll oblige, Dessler said, raising his hands and crossing them like two intersecting blades. His stance made the entire area feel frozen, causing the scantily clad women to retreat slightly but become even more fervent. Dessler will win. The fervent shouts were like those of fans chasing their idols. Kieran smirked. I didn't expect a Westerner like you to know Dragon's Land's eight trigrams dragon's roar palm. Dessler was slightly surprised that Kieran recognized his martial arts, but he sneered. To me, it's just two palms. Killing you is as easy as waving a hand. Let's see if your eight trigrams dragon's roar palm can really kill me with a wave of your hand. Kieran stepped back, legs positioned for defense and attack. He remembered his master's words about the eight trigrams dragon's roar palm. The palms act like blades converting internal energy into sharp edges, killing invisibly. Most importantly, the eight trigrams technique made it unpredictable and hard to defend against. Facing the stronger level five tempered body Dessler with such a powerful martial art, Kiran felt immense pressure. He prepared to counter with the nameless Frostfoot, using the cold energy he absorbed from the mysterious moon pond to boost his attack. Unimpressed by Kiran's defense, Dessler sneered, overestimating yourself. He raised his hand and a white light shot from his palm. Kieran quickly leapt into the air, dodging the attack. Crash! The eight trigrams dragon's roar palm wind sliced through a distant lamppost, cutting the two-meter iron post in half. Boom! The iron post fell with a loud crash, scaring some spectators and injuring a few. Cries echoed through the crowd, but it only made them more frenzied and confident in Dessler's victory. Dessler will win! The fervent shouts grew louder and more frequent. Nicholas's expression changed several times, relieved he hadn't opposed the Dessler family. With Dessler's strength, it would have been a futile effort. Annoyed by Kieran's dodge and the collateral damage, Dessler coldly said, A real man fights head on, not with petty tricks. Dessler crossed his palms again, his right hand ready to strike. Seeing the innocent injured, Kieran, though ridiculed by them, felt guilty. Those are your people. Aren't you ashamed of hurting them? Kieran asked. I despise you for not having the courage to face me, Dessler retorted, launching another sharp, cold palm strike at Kieran. The fierce palm wind was like an unsheathed sword, cutting through everything in its path. Kieran knew retreating would endanger those behind him. 
his strong sense of responsibility fueled his fighting spirit. With a powerful push, he launched the nameless Frostfoot, charging at Dessler like an arrow from a bow. Chapter 1119 Dessler's eyes flashed with disdain. To him, even if Kieran York's kicks landed on him, they wouldn't cause any damage. He believed his eight trigrams dragon's roar palm was enough to take Kieran's life. He found Kieran's choice foolish and laughable, even sneering at it. Instead of being grateful for his sacrificial protection, those behind Kieran hurled angry insults and mockery at him. Stupid yellow monkey. Kill the yellow monkey. Dessler will win. The scantily clad women in the crowd waving glow sticks began dancing, becoming a bright spectacle in the square. While the stage was set for a life-or-death battle, the crowd below seemed to be enjoying a celebration of everything good in life. Yet, on stage, it was as if death was beckoning one of the two combatants. The wind from Dessler's eight trigrams dragon's roar palm struck Kieran's nameless frost foot like lightning. Kieran felt his legs being cut by knives, a fierce pain surging through his body. His forward momentum slowed, and his body seemed about to be swept away and fall. Dessler's eyes gleamed with disdain, thinking it was over. How could a level three tempered body dare to challenge him? It was suicide. Yvonne Quinn, covering her face, could hardly bear to watch, her heart filled with pain, not expecting Kiran to fail here. Katie was stunned by the scene, and there was a strange pain in her heart. She cupped her hands around her mouth and shouted, Kiran, you're a gentleman, a hero, I love you. Katie's true feelings burst out in her moment of anxiety. Kieran, whose body was about to fall, suddenly felt a power surge within. The white jade cold pearl seemed to repair the wounds on his legs. With its appearance, the pain disappeared, and a new strength surged through him. Kieran regained power in midair and reached Dessler. Surprised that Kieran could still attack, Dessler reached out to grab Kieran's leg, intending to tear him apart. However, as soon as he touched Kieran's leg, he felt an Antarctic chill, momentarily stunning him. In that instant, Kieran's legs kicked Dessler's neck. Dessler tried to use his internal energy for protection, but his neck made a crisp, cracking sound. The next second, his head flew off, his body remaining on stage. Blood spurted from Dessler's neck like a broken faucet. Dessler's head screamed as it flew, and his body fell straight to the ground. Boom! Dessler's body hit the stage with a loud crash. The women's chance of Dessler will win turned into a final funeral dirge, contrasting sharply with Dessler's demise, almost mocking him. Dessler's head blinked once more in disbelief that he had died without even using his dragon and phoenix core technique. His level 5 tempered body and 8 trigrams dragon's roar palm should have crushed Kieran, but Kieran miraculously killed him. The once fervent women were now silent, their crazed dancing and shouting stilled by fear. Everyone felt like they were dreaming, unable to believe the reality before them Dessler had lost, and Kieran stood there, victorious. Kieran! Yvonne and Katie, as if waking from a dream, ran to him, hugging him tightly. Yvonne embraced him as if he were her husband returning from the brink of death, and Katie as if holding the man she loved most, unwilling to ever let go. Kieran won, Nicholas shouted in delight, though he had hoped for Dessler's victory earlier. He was thrilled to see Kieran win, especially seeing his granddaughter's love for Kieran. The crowd was at a loss for words. The vibrant women now felt like they had fallen into an ice pit. Their previous revelry felt distant as Dessler's cold corpse lay before them. Ailes, the organizer of the challenge, was conflicted. Kieran had won, and Ailes felt both joy and regret. He didn't know whether to support Kieran or the deceased Dessler. Kieran turned to the stunned Ailes, smiling, Now you can arrange for my next opponent. Kieran's calm voice echoed through the Man City Square, leaving the Westerners silent. They once believed in their superiority, but now saw an Eastern man as the true victor the man they had insulted repeatedly. Kieran, holding Yvonne and Katie, walked through the crowd, leaving behind an awe-inspiring figure. Dessler's body remained as a backdrop. However, Dessler's death infuriated his family. Chapter 1120. In the Dessler family's living room, an elderly man with a head full of white hair sat with a face full of authority and anger. This was Dessler's grandfather, Jones. Jones had not paid much attention to the duel between Dessler and Kieran York. In his view, killing Kieran was a simple task. However, he never expected that Dessler would be the one to die. Master, I believe Dessler underestimated his opponent, which allowed Kieran to take advantage. Otherwise, this would not have happened, said a tall man named Hills, stepping forward to address Jones. Hills, I am very angry about this. I want Kieran dead, Jones expressed his fury openly. Rest assured, Master, 
I will personally see to it that Kieran is killed and avenge our young master, Hills said confidently, his tone filled with murderous intent. I do not want Kieran to see tomorrow's sun, Jones declared, closing his eyes slowly as if the matter was already decided. Hills bowed slightly. I will bring Kieran's head back to honor our young master. With that, Hills turned and left. Jones did not speak further, but he gently squeezed the two walnuts in his hand, crushing them into a powder that flowed through his fingers like fine sand. The others in the hall remained silent, but their eyes were filled with battle intent and confidence in killing Kieran. To them, Kieran had no ability to contend with the Dessler family. They viewed Jones as a near deity. Unaware of the Dessler family's rage, Kieran walked with two women, feeling the familiar presence of the gray-clad elder. He recalled the elder's help at Mysterious Moon Pond. He put Katie down and said to her, You should go home. I have something to take care of with Yvonne. Katie was initially happy when Kieran carried her out, thinking he was moved by her confession. She was taken aback when he put her down and chose to leave with Yvonne. Yvonne is my woman. I must protect her, Kieran explained briefly, and before Katie could respond, he picked up Yvonne and disappeared. Katie stomped her foot in frustration, shouting into the air, Damn you, Kieran! Don't you know I want to be your woman? Didn't you hear my confession? Her angry outburst was clearly heard by Kieran and Yvonne, who both smiled but said nothing. Some things didn't need to be said out loud. Kieran and Yvonne had weathered many storms together. Don't speak, Kieran instructed Yvonne telepathically as she was about to say something. Yvonne obediently kept silent and held on to Kieran tightly. The gray-clad elder led the way without a word. In no time, the three of them reached the foot of a mountain on the outskirts of Man City. The elder stopped and turned to face Kieran. Having sensed the elder's presence, Yvonne looked at him with curiosity. Thank you, elder, Kieran said, putting Yvonne down gently. The elder nodded slightly, still facing away, and said, It seems your destiny is good. You managed to obtain the Jade Cold Pearl and used it to kill Dessler. Kieran was even more astonished at the elder's knowledge of everything. It made him respect the elder even more. Elder, how can I obtain the Dragon and Phoenix Core technique? The elder looked thoughtful, staring at the distant mountains. I have been searching for the Dragon and Phoenix Core technique for many years but have not found it. I don't know where the Dessler family has hidden it. Though not understanding their conversation, Yvonne blinked her large eyes, sensing a secret between them. I have killed Dessler. I believe his family will seek revenge. If I don't find the Dragon and Phoenix Core technique quickly, the consequences could be severe, Kieran expressed his concern. The elder nodded approvingly. You are calm and clear-sighted, recognizing the situation. Kieran raised an eyebrow and asked, Are the Dessler family already planning to retaliate? They have already sent people to retaliate against you. If they reach you, your enemies will be even stronger, the elder replied with concern. Understanding the elder's worry, Kieran felt a surge of pride and clenched his fists, saying, No matter who they are, if they dare come, I will fight them. Do not be reckless. There are many in the Dessler family who are stronger than Dessler. You have stirred a hornet's nest, the elder warned. Kieran clenched his fists tighter, his eyes sharp and determined. For now, stay on this mountain. It's called West Peak. It will be relatively safe here, and I will help you find a way to deal with the Dessler family's retaliation, the elder instructed. Kieran's expression grew complex. I can't just keep hiding. This isn't a long-term solution. I'm not asking you to hide but to intensify your training and quickly improve your skills, the elder explained. You should have reached level 4 tempered body at the mysterious moon pond. Without it, even with the jade cold pearl, you couldn't have killed Dessler. Hearing about training, Kiran calmed down. He knew without strength, he was nothing, and couldn't defeat the Dessler family. He took a deep breath and asked, To what level must I train to face them? At least level 7 tempered body to confront most of the Dessler family, the elder replied. Kiran's fists tightened, his eyes filled with intense battle spirit. He nodded to the elder and, without another word, headed toward West Peak with Yvonne.